Okay, so we're going to get um, started for today. We are switching from the world of InDesign into the world of Illustrator. And so as the course goes on, things get shorter and we start weaving things together, etc. cetera. Um, Illustrator is, is very similar to InDesign, yet it has its quirks and it's different. Um, as we start to explore more and more of the Adobe products, you'll start to learn which programs are better for what you're trying to do and what the advantages of working in one over the other are. There is, of course, a fair amount of overlap between the different programs. So um, Illustrator is also unique in that it's a really good bridge from some of the other drawing and modeling applications that we use in the world of architecture or design. Things like AutoCAD and Rhino many times come back into the world of Illustrator to do a few finishing touches. And I'll show you a lot of those uh, as we get a little bit further on in the semester. So the actual time in Illustrator will be a little bit short now in the beginning, but then we'll come back to it several times later on in the semester. Um, so today, rather than doing uh, a formal lecture about a specific topic, today we're going to get into Illustrator and we're going to get a lot of practice done. And what we're going to work with today is a tool called the Pen Tool. And the Pen Tool is available in InDesign, and it's also available in Photoshop. But I haven't shown it to you in, until now. And the goal today, and actually from this whole week, because we'll revisit the Pen Tool again next class, is that you will get very, very comfortable with the Pen Tool, really understand how to work with it, because it is that important. And so I don't waste two days out of class working on a very specific tool unless I thought it was really, really important long term. So it will be frustrating to you today as you try to learn it, unless you've already worked with the pen tool before, but it will get more comfortable by next class. So there's a lot of practice to do today, and we're going to spend our time doing that practice. Um, I have already pulled up exercise 113, which is today's exercise. At the bottom, under Downloads, there's a Download Illustrator template for Exercise 113. It will save you a bunch of headache if you go ahead and download that now. Um, and so I'll go ahead and open that up. And I forgot, on the projector, you can't see the, uh, the letters behind. Hold on a second. Let me. Uh, let me fix something so that hopefully you can see it. Not quite. One more. Oops. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it now. Um, so the projector is, is such that uh, you can't see the letters like I can on the screen. If you can't see them on your own screen, it's probably a screen setting. I'll help you. We can fix that uh, down the road. So what this is, is it's from a website. Uh, the website is paintfont.com. And I've gone ahead and I've, I've downloaded their PDF. Um, what this does is this website will take a drawing. It's actually designed for you to print out and handwrite your own letters and then make a font out of your own letters. We're going to use the, the practice of making letters um, to learn the pen tool. And so you're going to create a font today. Um, in all honesty, the fonts don't turn out spectacular, but at the same time, it gives you a bunch of practice in the pen tool, and that's the important part. All right? uh, and the act of having to create all the letters is a perfect way of learning how the pen tool works. So we will, we will work with this. Uh, website next class, but I at least wanted to pull that up so you could see it. So what I have is Adobe Illustrator. Uh, and if you look at this, essentially it looks almost identical to InDesign. Right? It's very, very close. And so I, I'm going to go through the whole workspace as I would normally go through so you can, you can see what I'm going to point out. Uh, the top we have our general file menu structure, same as uh, InDesign, same as Photoshop. Below that, we have a contextual ribbon that changes based on which tool you have currently active. I have the selection tool active. Therefore, it's going to give me some selection tools. right? Below this, um, on the left side here, we have a variety of tools that we're going to use. Today, we're going to use the pen tool, which is right here. It looks like an old-fashioned ink pen. That's the one we'll be using. Um, there are a bunch of shortcuts 
in the world of Illustrator, as in the world of Photoshop, as in the world of InDesign, I will not use the shortcuts. P, for example, will, will jump you to the pen tool. The reason I choose not to do that is you can't see me press that key. So it's much easier if I pick the buttons for you guys to, to pick up on it, OK? So we'll work with the pen tool. Um, way down at the bottom, we have two colors. We have a fill color and what's called a stroke color. The stroke color is the color of a line. The fill color is the, the color that fills in the line. Right? If you had a square, it would fill in the, the square. Uh, we can change the colors by double clicking on the colors. Right? We can also flip the colors using the little double-sided arrow to, in this case, we're going to have a black outline and it's going to be clear inside, which is, which is what we're going to want long term. Currently, I have the Essentials workspace showing. Um, we will get into some of the other workspaces down the road. For right now, the Essentials is just fine. Okay? On the right side here, I have a variety of other tools that are available. I have the color tool palette. right? Uh, this is the color guide. It helps you find similar colors. Uh, I have my swatches. There are almost no swatches loaded yet. We'll talk about what swatches are and why you would use them. Right? I also have brushes. We'll talk a little bit about brushes today. Okay. Below that, I have symbols. We won't use any today. Below that, I have something called stroke. Right? This has to do with our line thickness. We're going we're gonna to go through this today. One of the other things that I'd like to point out is Illustrator, for some reason that's kind of baffling to me, likes to show minimized versions of, of various windows. So here under stroke, there's a lot more options than just the weight of the stroke. But by default, Illustrator only shows us that. If we want more options, there's a little flyout menu. It looks like a triangle with four lines next to it. If you click on that and say show options, you get all the options. So why they hide it, I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. But they do. All right. So this has to do with how the corners come together and dash lines, et cetera. We'll go through this today um, so that you'll see a little bit more about that. We have a gradient tool. We have a transparency tool. Right? Below that, we have some other tools, uh, appearance, et cetera. Down here, there's two pieces of paper stacked on each other. Those are layers. That is also important. Okay? So before we get started right now, let's open up the layers window. And so I have the, the layers window open. And you'll see that there's a variety of layers. Okay? We have down here, we have the lowest three layers turned on by default. The upper three layers are turned off. These are for your exercise next class. You'll use the same file, but you don't have to worry about them just now. We have a page one layer. That layer controls the background, right? the, the guide that gives you where the letters are, et cetera. I'm going to go ahead and lock that so that I can't accidentally select it. Above that, I have a layer that has all the guides on it. I drew all those guides to help you. If you don't like them, you can get rid of them. I won't be offended, okay? but they are there. Uh, and they are, they are also on a locked layer. So both of those are locked. Then we have a third layer that's called font page one. Okay? I want to make sure that I've clicked on that layer and it's this kind of lightish bluish gray color. Okay? That means that that's the active layer and that's the one that when I start drawing, my objects will then go on. Okay? If you're up here, say on font page two layer, and you start to draw, nothing will show up and you'll be confused. Right? Let's go ahead and make sure that font page one is the active layer, and then what we, what we see is what we get. Okay? So I have font page one active. I'm going to go ahead and work with the pen tool, as I talked about before, which is over here. It looks like an ink pen. Okay? I'll go ahead and pick the pen tool. There are, by the way, if I click and hold, other options. We'll talk about what those are in a little bit. But for right now, I just want the basic pen tool. And I'm going to come down to letter A, and I'm going to start with letter A. I'm pressing Control plus to zoom in a bit so that I can see it. And now I'm going to start drawing with letter A. Okay? And so with letter A, it's relatively simple. Right? I'm going to go ahead and start in the lower corner here. I'll draw up to the middle. And I, all I've done is I've clicked at that point. I'm going to click at the middle point right there. And then I'll click down at the lower point like that. Okay? Now in my case, if we look at the letter A, this side looks OK, but this side looks kicked out. It's not quite right. This isn't in the center. Okay? So I'm going to make a modification to this. 
And so to do that, I'm going to use something called the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow, not the black arrow. There's a difference between the black arrow and the white arrow. The black arrow will allow you to select and move the whole object. The white arrow will allow you to select and move an individual control point. So I can click on this control point, and I can move it over. Right? I can move it up, for example. I can move it over until it feels like it's halfway. Right? About like that. Much better. Okay? So I now have this line drawn. I need to draw the crossbar. Right? So let's say I want to go across here. Now one of the, the challenges with the pen tool is that sometimes Illustrator doesn't like you to go on top of an existing line. So we start right next to a line and we draw across, for example, like that. And that starts our letter. Now I can come back in and I can move this, again using the direct select, the white arrow. I can move it over till it's on top. And I can move this one over till it's on top. Okay. So now I have the first letter. A. We can also temporarily turn off the background so you can see just my letter. Sometimes that's useful as well. Yeah? Uh, is it normal for you to draw so something in the background to disappear? If you lost the background, then you have a fill color in white. OK, so you want the fill to be transparent. If the fill was in white, for example, let me select this. If the fill here was white, Right, see how the background goes away there? Okay. Select your object, and then below the colors, the one on the right here is a red slash. If you, sorry, it's behind my head, right there. Right, if you click that little red slash, it'll go away and become transparent again. All right. So I now have this object. I'm going to turn off for a second the guides and the page just so that we can look at my letter A. Okay. If you look at the top here, see how it comes to a very nice peaked point? Okay? That may or may not be the style that you want for your letter. So let me use the direct select, the white arrow again, and let me click on the topmost point right there. And I'm going to come over to my stroke menu, which is the three lines here. And you'll notice that I have some options. Right here under corner, I have currently selected the 90 degree corner, which gives me that sharp end. If I do a round join, see how the top of my A turns to be rounded instead of a big point? Okay. I could also clip it off straight right, using the chamfer on this side here. Okay. It's a beveled join. So it clips off the top and it doesn't extend long. Furthermore, if I selected the ends here, I can choose how the end ends. Right? I can have it end exactly at the end of my line. I can have it rounded over. Okay? Or I can have it extend beyond my line a bit. Okay? So I have some flexibility with how these, these uh, corners come together. You do choose a particular end. Okay? You can, with nothing selected, you can make a change and it will affect everything. With a particular object selected, it will only affect that particular object. Okay, So let me take these and let me go back to my standard right there. I will make that a sharp point at the top. Okay. The other thing that I can do within the stroke menu, and again, I'm, I'm going to select the whole object. So I've switched to the black arrow, the regular selection tool. And I'm going to select both of these together. I held down Shift to select both segments. I can increase the weight. Right? I can make them thicker or thinner. Right? If you don't want to jump 1, 2, 3, you can type in any value. Say, no, actually, I want a 2.5. We can type that in. And we, so we can have any custom value in between. Stroke. Okay. I could also change. Let's say I wanted it to be a dashed line. I can switch to be dashed. I can change the size of the dash. Right? I could say I want it to be only a one point dash. Right? And all of those get really close together. I could say that I wanted the gap to be four points. Right? And it would vary. I could also create a pattern. I want the gap to be two points here, 
I want the next line to be uh, 4, and I want this one to be 1. Right, so I could create a pattern in my line if I wanted to. Not that this is something that you really want to do for a letter, but I'm just trying to show you the ver variety of options here. The other thing that we have, and let me go ahead and I'm just going to draw a temporary line here so you can see it, is we have the ability to add arrowheads at the beginning or the end. So for example, I could put an arrow on one end. I could put the end of an arrow on the other end. You get the idea. Not that that's attractive either, but you get the, you get the idea. There, there are the ability to do that um, as well. So let me go ahead and get rid of that. So we have the letter A here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. All right, let's go to two point. And I'm going to turn back on under layers my guides. And we're going to move on to the next uh, line here. Hold on a second. This got a little bit long. Let me pull that back up. Okay, okay I'm going to move on to the letter B. Okay, so for the letter B, I'm going to start at the bottom here, and I'm just going to draw a straight line up. Now I want this line to be perfectly straight, and you see there's a point at which I get a little green guide. Well, it's hard for you to see on the screen, but that means it's straight. The other option would be to hold down shift, which is going to ensure that the line is straight. Okay? So I'll go ahead and draw the first line segment there. Now the next line segment again goes straight over to right, right about here. So I'll go ahead and click again at the next line segment. So I've gone up and over. Now, we need to start to create this curve for this particular line. Okay? So if I went, say, here, right, it would be a straight line segment, and back to here it would be a straight line segment. Okay? Well, that's not the look that I'm going for here. It may be yours, but for me, it's not going to be. So I'm going to undo, Control-Z. And this time, instead of just single clicking here, I'm going to click and hold. And then I'll drag out a tangent line. Okay? And you can kind of see the arc that it's creating right there. And it then builds this arc. I'll come down here to the next point, be right there. Okay? Then I'll come back across to very close to, but not on top of the existing line, like that. So one of the things that happens is if you don't have a lot of experience with the pen tool just yet, right, your loop isn't going to look even. Okay? Obviously, I've had a lot of practice with it, so my initial loop looks reasonable. Okay? But you can come back and select this middle point and then adjust the tangent to work. You know what? Let me change my color of this layer and see if I can make it so that you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, there you go. You can see it a little bit better. You can't see it as well on the line, but you can see it better here. Okay? So if I were to, to make this longer, right, you can see that I can adjust the curvature here. I can make it shorter till I like the look. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do it again. There'll be lots of practice. Okay? So I'm going to start this time for the bottom at the bottom. Okay? When I move over an existing point, my cursor changes, they're bowling, uh, to, to have a little line next to it. That means it's going to start at the last point. We'll come over a little bit further this time, say about there. Now I'm going to click, hold, and drag, and you can start to see the arc appear. Right? And then I'll end back up here. Oops, sorry. Close to, but not on top of there. Okay, so I made a mistake. I have a curve here, then I have a straight line segment. Okay, I'm going to go back to the direct select tool. I'm going to select this point, and I'm going to come up to my ribbon at the top. And you see how there's a convert selected anchor points to smooth button, right? If I click on that, it'll smooth them out, and then give me a tangent line to start to adjust. Right, so we'll adjust that down a little bit. Which one? This? Oh, here. Let me move this over a little bit. I'll do this lower segment again. Okay, bear with me for just a second while I get rid of it. 
All right, so I'll come back with the pen tool. I'm going to start right on top of this point there. I'm going to go over and I'm going to click. It's just a single click. Then I'm going to come up to the next point here. I'm going to click and hold and drag to create that first tangent line. So there it is. Then I'm going to come up close to, but not on top of my existing point, about there. And that will then make the second half of the arc. Okay. I can use the direct select tool, and I can move this on top of that point. I can adjust my tangency down a little bit until I'm happy with whatever my, my line looks like. All right, maybe this needs to be a little bit more. Maybe this needs to pull over a little bit. Like that. Okay. Now, I, of course, could start to make some modifications. I'm doing very traditional letters, right? But I could take the top here. I could make it much taller. Over here. When I click like this, you have to click and hold. All right. And then I could come back and I could move this up a little bit further. The point is that I can adjust the style of my letters, right, to be whatever feels appropriate. Obviously, this is a very different style uh, than, than the first letter. Okay. It is. Okay, so let's move on to the letter C. Okay. And when I do the letter C, right, I can again start with the pen tool. This is going to involve several control points along the way. Right? Let's say I start with the, the upper part of the C here. Now one of the, the, the things about working with the pen tool is learning where to make the control points. Right? And the temptation is always to do too many control points. You want to do it at as few as you can. So I would start with a single click here at the top of my C. I'd go up to the very top, click drag, and create my first tangent. I would go halfway down the side here, click and drag bottom right here, click and drag, and I would end with a single click there. Okay, So fewest control points possible is good. Now, this is a reasonable looking C, but it's really not as symmetrical as I would like it to be. Right? One of the things about a C is they tend to be symmetrical. So maybe instead of doing it using just the pen tool, right? instead I'm going to use one of the shapes to start. So we've been using the pen tool. If I come down a little further, there's something that looks like the rectangle tool. Okay. If I click and hold on the rectangle, you can see that I have a variety of other shapes available. So I'm going to pick the ellipse tool. And the ellipse, I'm going to start from one corner right here. And I'll drag, and I'll come down to the opposite corner. Okay. So that creates a perfect circle slash ellipse for me, okay? which is definitely symmetrical. But I need to cut open this side. Okay? So herein lies another tool that's hidden within the pen tool. And so what I'll do is I'll click and hold on the pen tool. And you see that there's something called add anchor point. It has a little plus next to the pen tool. This add anchor point tool allows you to add a control point anywhere on the path. Okay. And I should point out that this circle already has control points with tangent lines. Right? So I could, I could modify, for example, what this circle looked like. Not that I would want to right now. So let me go back to the Add Anchor Point tool. And I'm going to click where I want the end of the top of the C to be. So maybe it's right there. Likewise, I'm going to click where I want the bottom of the C to be. Maybe it's right there. Okay, so I've added an anchor point here and an anchor point there. Then I'll go to the direct select, the white arrow. And I'll come in here and I'll select the point that's in the middle of these two points. So right there. If there isn't a point in the middle, you have to create one. 
to be able to select it. Now that I have that point selected, I can press the delete key on the keyboard, and I now have a nicely shaped C. Pretty easy. Okay? But again, it takes practice. So I've used the shape to start my letter, and then I've modified it. Okay? So let's move over to the D. I'll go back to my regular pen tool. And this time, we'll go up, straight line segment, right there. Oops, sorry. There we go. I'm going to come out a little bit, middle, click and drag for the tangent line, back to here, straight line, back to there. I'll come back with my direct select, and we'll make some modifications. Right? Maybe I want it to be a different style, kind of like my like my B has a little different style. Maybe I like that. I don't know. The point is, you can play around with it and decide what you want. Okay? E really, really easy. Right? It's just straight lines. F really easy too. However, sometimes it's useful. Let's say I created an E and I liked it. Okay, so I say, okay, there's my E. Let's go from here to here. And we'll do another one. Oops. All right, okay. Wow, I really like my E. I don't know why I like it, right? It's pretty ugly. But I can take this E, and I can copy it, edit copy. I can go to edit paste, and I can move it over for the F, because it's very similar. And I could take this piece, oops, sorry, no object isolation mode, hold on. And again, I'm using the, the black arrow here. I can move this up. I want to get rid of this line segment, but it's attached. right? So let me use the direct select. I'll pick the point on the end here. I'll go ahead and press delete. That goes away. Right? And I've used essentially the same letter form for the E and the F. So you can copy letters, if that makes sense. Similarly, if I came back to the C, I like the C. Let me select it with the black here. Control C. Let me find where G is. Oops, looks like it's down here. All right. Let's paste the, the C. There it is. Let me go up from here. Like that. And I now have the G. So once you have a letter, it's easy to, to, to adapt that letter. Right? Obviously, H is fairly easy. I, very easy, okay? So let's come down here to where the things get a little bit more complicated. Mm. Right? So this is when you can start to test your abilities a bit, okay? Because there's not really a way of creating this using other shapes, right? You just have to go for it, okay? So again, it's about where you pick your control points. So let's say you start here with one point, click and hold at the top for that, Right, right about there. Click and hold at the side. One in the middle, click and hold. One down here, click and hold. One here, click and hold. And one there to finish. Okay. Obviously, I've had a lot of practice. Right? So I know I make it look a lot easier than it actually is. But even with my practice, I still need a few adjustments afterward. Right? I want to just make a few little tweaks, make it really look the way I want it to. Let's pull that up just a little bit more. Let's increase the body here a little bit. Too much. Down a little bit. Right? Something like that. Okay? So it takes practice to get the, the look that you're after. Right? This needs to be a little bit longer. Like that. Anyway, so you can play around with it. Obviously, the S is one of the, the harder ones to do, and that's going to take more practice. That's part of the point. Okay, we do have some other options that I want to show you before, you before you get too far along. 
And that is that we can assign any one of these letters something called a brush. And so if you look over here on the right side, there's a little like, like in the old school days where you had pens and pencils and stuff like that, you had like a cup on your desk and you had stuff in it, right? That's what this symbol is supposed to be, right? We have just a basic brush showing right now, but if I click the little fly out menu and I go to open brush library, you can see that there's a bunch of brushes that are loaded in that can be loaded in. Let's go to artistic and let's do uh, the chalk, charcoal, and pencil, right, for example. These are a bunch of brushes that I can use. I could, for example, pick the charcoal feather. And eh, that doesn't look very good, right? And I could go through and I could use any one of these to help identify maybe something like this. Right? They're all not really turning out that well. That's probably the best of all of them, right? Because they're too thick. So let me try a different set of brushes. Let's go to Open Brush Library, Artistic. Let's go Artistic Ink. See if one of these is a little bit better. Yeah, I think my stroke is too too big. Let's go 0.25. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Let me go back to one of these. Yeah, there you go. So my stroke was just too thick. Okay, so you can use these to change the look of your letter. The other thing that you can do. Let me just jump back here a second. Okay, is I can work with something called the width tool. And this is the last thing that I'll show you, and then I'll give you lots of time to practice. Okay, I promise not too much. Okay, over here, under I love it when even I can't find it. There it is, right there. The width tool, it's like a little slug with a I don't know, a line across it. <laughs> it's hard to describe. Okay. If I click on the width tool, I can customize the width at any point along my curve. So let's pick this part of the S, and I can make that part of the S a little bit thicker. I could make this end point of the S thinner. I can make this end point of the S thinner. Okay, so it gets thicker, thinner. Maybe this needs to be a little bit thinner too, right? Something like that. I can do the same thing for any letter. So I could come back to say the G, right? And using that width tool here, I could fatten up this side, for example, to be a little bit thicker. I can make this a little bit thinner. Maybe I make that one a little bit thinner too, something like that, right? So I have the ability to, to adjust that. There are also presets for the width down here at the bottom for profiles that I could pick from. So these are profiles that have already been established that may be useful to you as well. Again, that's under the stroke menu at the very bottom. Okay? So I show you that as one extra option. Most of you will stick with the basic lines, and that's perfectly fine. Okay? So like I said, today is about practice. I think ideally, you'd get through all the capital letters. There are two sheets to work on, um, but the second sheet doesn't have as many. So if I turn on page two, you can see it's all of the lowercase letters, and that's it. Okay? So you don't have as many to work on. So the more you get done today, the less work you have to do next class. Uh, but again, it's getting through the practice. So if you got through the uppercase letters plus the numbers, that would be pretty good for today. Okay? Take your time, practice, work through how to make the letters, how to make the modifications. I know it can be tedious in the beginning, but it will pay dividends down the road. If you really understand the pen tool, it makes life a lot easier when we get into diagramming and some of the other advanced things in Illustrator. Okay? Are there any questions about Illustrator to start? No? You can, but I want you to stay away from shadows for right now. Okay? We're just we're we're being simple. Um, so as I mentioned before, for those of you that trickled in a, a little bit late, uh, the assignment was supposed to be due today. I failed to put it on the calendar, so it's my mistake. Even though the assignment sheet said it was due today, I didn't put it on the calendar, so I'll give you an extra day. That means it's due on Wednesday before the start of class it needs to be posted. Okay, so nobody will be late. If you already posted it, great. Don't worry about it. Just you, you're done. Okay, that doesn't change the due date for next the next assignment. You'll get your next assignment next class. Um, 
to be due later on. So just be aware that it doesn't push anything. It just gives you an extra day for this one and a day less for the next one. Okay? All right. <clears throat>